you've fallen for a married woman. Yeah, it doesn't really work as well. The story would be so much different if she wasn't already married. The fact that she's going home and sleeping in a bed with another dude? Yeah, definitely don't like that. Emotionally, it ate me up inside. It's the reality. The person that you have feelings for right now woke up in the bed of another man this morning. What in the world is going on? This is John with the Dr. John Deloney Show. So grateful that you've joined us. We have a packed house out there. Just kidding. There's two. There's two. Two people got up early to come watch the show. Hey, and for those of you listening, I'm so grateful that you are, are, are joining us on the show. As you know, we talk about mental health. We talk about emotional health. We talk about your marriage, whatever's going on, your dating life, your kids. Um, kids are going back to school. Or by the time you hear this, kids will be back in school. Whatever you got going on in your life, um, <laughs> Kelly's raising the roof in there. Get my kids out of my house. Whatever you got going on in your life, um, my promise is I'll sit with you and we will work it out and figure out what's the next what's the next right step. What's the next right step? If you want to be on the show, give me a buzz. 1-844-693-3291. 1-844-693-3291. Or go to johndeloney.com slash ask. And um, two, two big asks that I've got for you. Um, I don't like to ask for a lot, but please go like and subscribe to the show. That that does make a huge difference in how the show gets kicked up into the algorithms. We had our biggest month all time ever, ever. Um, we ended up at the top five last month. It's it's amazing um, to see the support you guys are continuing to give to the show. And um, continue, I'm going to continue to just beat this drum. My brand new book, Building a Non-Anxious Life. This is the actual book. I'm excited about it. Um, it is in pre-sale right now. If you go to johndeloney.com, you can pre-order it for 20 bucks and we'll send you all kinds of stuff. You can instantly download a talk I did for a couple thousand folks um, on one of the chapters in the book and um, you'll get the ebook and the audiobook. Some folks have asked like, hey, can I just get the audiobook? You can when it comes out, but it's going to be like 12 or 15 bucks or whatever. So you can get a hardback copy here. Um, I'm autographing some of these books, whatever. So Building a Non-Anxious Life, this is it. If you're watching on YouTube, check it out. Um, go to johndeloney.com and pick it up for 20 bucks. It really, really um, helps the final count of the book. And um, I, I just can't tell you, we've been so blown away by the numbers on the front end. What's up? You just say something? Well, just wanted to make sure people know the actual date the book comes out. Yes, the book will be in your hand October 3rd. Right. It, if you pre-order it, um, it comes out on October 3rd, and it should be in your mailbox that, that morning. That morning. That's exactly right, yeah. And um, they're shipping up some pallets up to the building. I'm going to spend a couple of days signing books and signing books, which is the, it's the funnest thing for me, man. So um, thank you all so much. Check that, check that out. Let's run out to Cleveland, Ohio, and talk to the great and powerful... Bradley. What's up, Brad? How's it going, Dr. John? I'm doing great, man. How are you? Uh, living the dream, sir. <laughs> Anytime somebody says they're living the dream, they're for sure not living the dream. I mean, that's the Midwest way. I mean, it's what we do. <laughs> we lie. What's up, dude? Uh, going through life, um, had a question about relationships. Uh, met this new girl that's absolutely incredible, and she is in the process of, uh, going through a separation and then a divorce and just feeling some feelings of, I don't want to say shame, but you know, uncertainty. Like I want to know how to best support her, me, like we talk about wanting to be together. I I know I you know truly care about her. I know she feels the same and, you know, just looking for some guidance on how to move forward with that. How honest can I be with you? I'm ready. So you're, you're, you've fallen for a married woman. That's the, yeah, that's the truth. Yeah. Um, the best advice I can give you, just guy to guy sitting across the table is run as fast as you can. And I know you don't want to hear that because she's incredible and she's had some moments where you could reach out and actually help her because she's been struggling. And for the rest of your time together, you will wonder when this other shoe drops and you're the other guy. No, that's definitely crossed my mind. I would tell you right now, man, she, she, she's cheating on her, herself. She's cheating on her, even if she's in the middle of a breakup. And by the way, that's the number one thing I hear from folks who are like, no, 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 no. Like we're already breaking up and their, their, their husband or wife has no idea that they're already breaking up. Right. Um, I would tell you to, as hard as this is going to be, I would tell you to run. And maybe, um, and even after like, she gets, y'all get divorced or she gets divorced and there's six months where y'all are friends, or whatever, then maybe, 
But I'm telling you right now, dude, you're never going to be able to sleep. Have you already had those feelings? Or I, I, I bet, let, let me ask you this. Are yeah. you feeling weird that she goes home to her house with her husband? Uh, it comes every so often, but I mean, in general, I just kind of do my best to, you know, not think about that. The fact that she's going home and sleeping in a bed with another dude. Yeah. 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 I mean, definitely don't like, yeah. Is she sleeping with another guy? Yeah, definitely. Again, no, don't like that. Um, definitely been so much crossing line and I just, again, just don't think about it or do what well, I do. I can't not think about it, but. I, I bet you're being coy. I bet you think about it a lot. Depends on the day. I mean, to be completely honestly, there like some days more than others, other days not. Um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say it's on my mind every waking moment. I can't say with absolute, you know, honestly, that it's never there. Yeah. Uh, just, I mean, again, it just depends on the day. How did this happen, man? Um... I, we, uh, met through some, uh, some through martial arts. Um, when I first met her, she, uh, there's like instantaneous chemistry and at no point would I've ever thought she was married. Then she didn't have a ring on like it's just the way that it was looking like there was nothing that was seemed, you know, married woman. Um, and at that point, I knew like if she if I met her again, it would have been a you know an issue for me because like I felt the chemistry right away. And at that point, I was in a relationship, so I didn't do anything. I you know. Uh, and then a couple months later, uh, we met up again. At that point, I wasn't, and I was like, oh, you know, it definitely just kind of spurred from there. But I think I don't know. Just I think it's just so much of the compatibility, like that instantaneous chemistry, but doesn't really work as well if you know the story would be so much different if she wasn't already married. <laughs> yeah i mean the story would always be different if dot 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 fill in the blank if they were taller faster funnier made more money no absolutely weren't married right um i mean i can't lie i figured that it was the uh i figured the um what you said there about running be the you know i figured that's what you're gonna say why haven't you uh, yet not what i wanted to hear i know why haven't you what because i think about this you met her she yeah. was married yeah and yeah. even your own words, like, I wouldn't even have known, which told me she was flirty. She was fun. She was hilarious. She was a good martial arts competitor, like a corner, not uh, the cornerstone of her life. Yeah. You didn't even know about. Um, so put yourself on the other side of that, man. What happens with, what, when, when that happens to you? No, I... You bring up a lot of stuff that I've thought about and I promise I have and naively or ignorantly, I push it away. Um, I mean, it's a lot easier to say, Oh, that wouldn't be me. Um, I think at this point, not, not running. Uh, I've been again, so easy to get caught up in the feelings and the emotion and right, wrong or indifferent. We have been through nothing romantic, but we've been through different things. Like there's, she's had various medical stuff that, I've been the only person that's been there with her because she didn't trust her husband or family to be there. Um, I'm going to so tell you right. Hey, Brad, so, I'm going to tell you right now. So, so I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you right now, dude, yeah. she's playing you. Yeah. Here's what's happening. She found herself in really, really deep water and you happen to yeah. swim by. So she clung to you and she'll cling to you until the smoke clears on this thing. good old school trauma bonding then it's not even trauma bonding dude like there's not a bond here this is a this is someone holding on to you for dear life and you like the warmth of that hug and i don't blame you i don't blame you at all um but you have to see that what you're feeling and experiencing is not real it feels so intense and so good and so right and there's none of it is real if you were to call me and say, hey, six months, uh, yeah. like, I just met this woman. She's amazing. She just got uh, divorced six months ago, and I'm thinking about asking her out or whatever. I would say to be careful then. Right. But you don't, you don't even feel comfortable being Brad right now. You don't feel comfortable being 
in a relationship with a married woman, right? No, I don't. So what what is it about this whole thing that is making you take what you feel and just throw it away or just put it in a paper shredder and just keep plowing forward? Again, I guess it could just be naivety, could be ignorance, could just be getting so caught up in the emotion that's there with it. Um, genuinely trusting and believing that, you know, what she's saying and how she's acting is that she wants that new relationship, that new life, and she wants it with me, but ignoring the potential downfalls and the, you know, the hole that I'm digging with it. I would even go as far to say as I don't know that she's, I wouldn't call her a liar right out of the gate. I don't think she's lying to you. No, I mean, I don't think she is. I don't. I think she doesn't know either. I, 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 let me just give you the stats on it. Yeah. I, a hundred percent of the time I've never seen this work. Now I'm going to get all kind of, there's going to be a bajillion people in the YouTube comments. that are like, no, one time. Fine. I don't know those people. Uh, Yeah. I don't know. I I don't know. them. Sometimes people will meet. I I do know people who are like have full on affairs and go on to get divorced and be with the person they're having an affair with. And that goes on fine. Um, but I can hear in you, you really have feelings for this person and you understand that you have feelings for somebody in a house that's on fire. No, that's, that's, that's right. So what's your question? Like, how can I help you? I know I've kind of just taken all the air out of everything. No, I mean, I mean, the genuine question was, you know, how could I best support her and myself and you know at that point it was like a future us but the future us has been deflated you know yeah. probably rightfully so i mean you know a lot easier to just blaze the trail ahead without looking around to see what's going on um if this is going to be a hard thing to, to hear but it has not been your job to take care of her that's been her husband's job and her family's job if she's in an abusive situation she's getting beat up whatever um that's a whole other situation and that doesn't sound like what's going on here. And that separation is not a, a lengthy drawn out process. So I would ask you if, if she was so committed yeah. to this, why is she still going back to that same house? I mean, for her words, it was, um, finding housing, which she just did. And then um, with the medical stuff, the insurance was with him, so she was holding on to it for that. Explanations maybe, excuses no, but from a like a logical standpoint, I, it made sense to me emotionally. It you know just kind of ate me up inside, but yeah, it's, and it's still eating you up inside. No, it is. And if you think about it from her side, she got a free pass. She didn't have to deal with the relationship challenges that she she may or may not have. Um, she just got this guy that swooped in and gave her rides, took care of money, took care of meals, took care of emotional needs. Um, and she didn't have to do the hard work of asking for help, d- dealing with her marriage from the inside out, dealing with her family situation. Didn't have to deal with any of that stuff. She just had this white knight that showed up and ta-da. And the moment that there's not a say a, a need to be saved, there will be a reckoning of some sort. No, I mean, that is definitely something I've thought about. I mean, uh, how old are you? Okay, briefly, twenty six. Okay, briefly, what were we gonna say? I said I've definitely something I thought about. You know, however briefly, I mean, wouldn't say I just ignored it entirely, but after thinking about it being, you know, that's just uh temporary thing that is just, you know, clean to the person that happens to be there. Um, you know, it's a tough time. So of course she's looking for a life raft. And then after that, it's just going to be, you know, said and done and over with. Um, it's definitely something I thought about that, and for sure. Something I pushed away even more. Cause I'm like, no, it can't be the real, the reality, but it's the reality. The person that you have feelings for right now, woke up in the bed of another man this morning. That's the reality. That's the reality. And at 26, this will probably be the hardest thing you've ever done. Maybe not. Maybe you've been through a bunch of crap in your life and whatever. But um, I think that the right, the right call here is I'm going to call her on the phone and say, hey, I can't 
I can't talk to you anymore. When the smoke clears from everything and a divorce is finalized and all that, then possibly. Um, maybe. But I, you can't, you, Brad, let me talk just to you. You cannot enter into a romantic relationship and just start pretending reality isn't real. Facts aren't actually facts, right? You can't just pretend like, I'm just not going to pretend that she goes home to this other guy every night. I'm not going to pretend that we've been um, having deep conversations. We may have hooked up a few times, but she's been saying, it just takes a while. It just takes a process. It just takes time. It, it, I'm slowly working on it. I'm, I'm going to do this and we're going to be together forever. You, you can't enter into a relationship just shoving all that stuff down. It's real. It's real. And it, let's be super honest, brother. It's killing you and it should be killing you. There are people who can just be like, I don't care. That's between her and her husband, but what we have is between us. And knock your lights out. But that's not you, man. That's not you. But you're going to, you, you, probably what would happen is if you did this, that would be like, I thought, and you said, and so you're just going to leave me here to do all this by myself? Yep, I am. And if she turns the tables on you and starts accusing you of stuff and starts, but you said that, now you really have all your answers. Because I would say somebody who's dealing with a, a relationship falling apart with integrity would say, hey, um, I like you. I like spending time with you. It's not fair to you to drag you through what I'm going through right now. And I love having you around, but it's not smart. It's not safe. It's not, it's not, it's not reality. When I, all the smoke clears from this, then I'll reach out. But until then, man, please follow your gut on this one. And your gut is so true. And your gut is saying, run, brother, run. So I'll just tell you, I'll speak up on behalf of your guts. Run. Walk away. And do it with dignity. Um, but you got you to gotta back out of this one, man. You got to back out of this one. And, man, you know that. You know. Sorry, man. I wish I could have given you some, some happier news to start this show. But um, she's cheating on herself. She's cheating on her husband. She's cheating on her family. She's cheating on you. And that's not a great way for you. That's not a good um, ecosystem for you to start some new relationship right now. <sighs> Sorry, my brother. We'll be right back. Hey, good folks. It's that time again. School is back in session. It's time to get back to the routines we threw out the window in May. Got to get up early, drop your kids off, pick your kids up, and no more ice cream for dinner. Your schedules are about to go bonkers with games, concerts, helping with homework, and a hundred other things, but I've got an important reminder for you. Please, please make sure you prioritize your sleep for your kids, for your marriage, for your work, for you. Getting seven to nine hours of deep, rejuvenating sleep is one of the best things you can do for your physical, mental, and emotional health. And for me, good sleep starts with a great mattress, and that's why I love DreamCloud mattresses. And right now, DreamCloud is making it easy with an incredible deal just for our listeners. 40% off all mattresses plus an additional $50 in savings. Go to dreamcloudsleep.com and enter promo code John Deloney today. That's dreamcloudsleep.com and enter promo code John Deloney. All right, we're back. Let's go out to Phoenix, Arizona, where it's 1 billion degrees and talk to Rebecca. What's up, Rebecca? Hi, it is not quite a billion degrees, but it definitely feels hot. What do you, <laughs> it feels hot because it's a billion degrees. I heard the other day that it was 25 straight days of over 110 uh, yeah, it was horrible. Especially we just moved here from Montana. Oh. So I am not used to this heat. <laughs> Why did you, everyone in the planet is like eyeballing Montana as the sacred holy place to escape to. And you guys are like, nah, we'll move to hell. That sounds fun. I know. Yep. That's my husband's doing. <laughs> I mean, you got to reevaluate this relationship. I'm just playing. I'm playing. Um, <laughs> Golly, I'm and again, I'm from Texas. I'm a lifelong Texan, and even Texans are like, it's real hot. But then looking over to their left, and they're like, but it ain't Phoenix, man. Gee, right? our cactuses yeah. are falling over. Yeah, it's it's been a huge adjustment. Our pets' heads are falling off. All right, all right, all right. So I'll quit talking about the the weather. What's up? 
Okay. Yeah. So um, I guess I'm just going to kind of jump right into it. I, I wrote out my question. I hope that's okay. Yeah, that's great because I talk too much. And, that's perfect. Yeah. Here, all right. Here we go. So I'm a mother of four young kids, five and under. And I feel like my patience is spread just too thin to cover my whole family. <laughs> Hold on. Let's just stop right there. I go out of my way to try and be a patient and as patient and kind with my kids as possible because I know at the end of the day, they don't mean to frustrate me as much as they do. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Rebecca, um, Rebecca, Rebecca, Rebecca. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. You have four kids under five. Yes. <laughs> you are entitled to all the feelings you would like to have. <laughs> all of them. There is there is no feeling you are experiencing right now that makes you crazy. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Rebecca, if you said I think about murdering 3 out of the f- 4, I would be like, yeah, that's fair. Like there <laughs> like you have four kids under 5. That makes your house like a bomb went off inside of it. Yeah, most days, yes. <laughs> And you're left changing the diapers of all the survivors. That's chaos. Okay. So you are frustrated and you feel like you're snapping at people. Basically, it's just my husband. At the end of the day, I, I know it's so bad. I, like, I, I've never had problems with other people, too. I, I'm kind of a control freak. I've been that way for, I think, all of my life. I'm sure my mom would attest to that as I'm dressing up my younger brother in dresses and carting him around the house, telling him what to do. As you should. <laughs> um, yeah, but, but I've never had issues. You know, it's not a problem when I was in school. It's never been a problem at jobs. Um, and even with my kids, you know, I, I really do. I try my best. I understand at the end of the day that teaching them how I want them to behave is going to be a process that takes years. Um, but my husband, it's just, I, I have no patience, no grace for him. It is zero to a hundred. Even if it's just the most minor thing, I just, I snap. (laughs) Because you have four kids under five. Is he helping at all? Yes. Oh yeah. He's amazing. He's a, he's a teacher. So he has gone for most of the day, but when he gets back and, and I mean, he does everything that I ask him to do, but it's, it's gotta be specific. It's got to be, you know, it cannot be, Hey, will you make up some baby food? I have to tell him exactly what needs to be made, how it needs to be made, all that kind of stuff. And even sometimes when I do that, he still will do it different ways. And that's almost where I really lose it is just that it's not done the way I want it to be done. Yeah. Yeah. So what happened when you were a kid and this can happen, you can have great parents. This still happens. But somewhere along the way, you learned that you had to be in control of every variable. What does that stem from? Um, probably, I'm, the more I've talked to my mom, the more I think that it comes from the fact that um, I'm the oldest of three, and my sister is born with one of the rarest conditions of arthritis. Um, she would know everything about it. I just basically know that basically from the time she was an infant, she suffered um, a lot of pain in her joints. And, um, and, and of course, you know, as an infant, they didn't know what the problem was. And so my mom just did not have time for me and my brother. And she tells me now that without me there, she doesn't think she would have been able to do it because I'm the one who got us up and ready for school. I'm the one who made breakfast. I'm the one who, when we, when we got home from school was entertaining my brother Where was and that? letting my mom sleep. And, um, my, my dad's a graveyard, um, worker. He's a sheriff. So, okay. you know, he's sleeping during the day and then at work for 12 hours a night. Did you say he's a sheriff. Yes. Oh, fantastic. All right. So here's what you have. Like, and, and I want to give you some peace on this. Okay. Um, there are some pretty compelling anecdotal, uh, Huberman calls it anic data, um, with cops, kids of which I am one. Oh, I didn't know that. That's so cool. Yes, it is cool, but also comes with a lot of drama because cops, kids Mm -hmm. have dads that their entire lives are lived outside the bell curve, meaning nobody gets murdered in the park. Except a hundred percent of your dad's day is dealing with that one time someone did. Mm-hmm. And over time it becomes, you know, this could happen, Rebecca, you know, Rebecca, Hey, Rebecca. And you put on top of being a cop's kid 
who's working the graveyard shift. You've been a mother since you were four. And if you didn't do everything, like your mom said, the house shut down. Mm -hmm. So the stakes have been so high for so long that if you get one thing wrong, you're out. Right? Your sister goes on whatever. Your brother doesn't have food. He doesn't go to school. You've been a parent since you could, you should not have been a parent when you were a kid. You should have been sitting in a mud puddle playing with sticks. And then you fast forward and that same skill set kicks in when you have a chaotic house. And I'm making a joke, but I'm being super serious. Four kids under five is a lot for a human nervous system to handle. That's a lot. And so your body has one switch. It's got those neural maps already mapped out. Here's how we handle this. And then you have an amazing, loving husband who's like, or I can just put raisins in it. And your brain goes, and, it's, and it, it lights him on fire, right? Yeah. And so your brain is doing exactly what it's been trained to do. So I want you, A, to give yourself some grace. Stop going to war with Rebecca because that's not going to solve this, okay? Okay. Also, you're going to have to keep on a loop in your mind. My husband is not my dad. My husband is not my mom over and over and over and over again. Okay? You had no okay. business running your household as a, as a little girl. And yet you did. Okay? And so now what you're going to have to practice is um, a couple of things. Number one, you are going to have to just flat get over, sister, the I don't like telling him all the details. You're going to just have to help tell him all the details. What I would tell you is these conversations are way better had, not in the heat of battle. This is like, hey, we've got four kids under five. Our whole life is different. Let's go out. And you hear me say this. I, like I just beat this drum over and over. Let's go out and talk about making breakfast. Let's go out and talk about how we do laundry. Let's go and talk about some of these things. Give him a list of three or four things of the way you like it done. And um, so be super, super clean. Because here's what happens. You, you, you are not looking for the results, which are clean clothes or mixed baby food. Your body is searching for the action. Am I in control of everything? See what I'm saying? Yeah. And here's the thing. You are not. And your, your body knows that, but your brain's like, I want to be in control. And then all, then it creates a self-fulfilling prophecy where he didn't want to touch nothing because he always does it wrong. And he's just going to work a little bit more. And maybe he's just going to stay a little bit later in great papers, which leaves you on your own more. You see how this thing just gets sideways real fast, right? Yeah. And so, and then you get more controlly because you, your husband's going away and your kids are a little bit crazier because they miss their dad and you, you grab control a little bit tighter and then the whole thing just, right? Like one of those cactus yeah. in the Arizona desert just falling over, <laughs> right? Yep. So here's how I want you to practice this. Number one, I want you to take them out and distill it down to a few things you can't live with. Here's what I mean by that. My daughter has a peanut allergy. I didn't believe those things were real. And because I was a loudmouth 18 to 25 year old, I, the cosmos gave me a kid with a peanut allergy. When she was born, I would take her places. I would go have fun. I was trying to get out of the house and I love you know, doing things with my one-year-old, two-year-old daughter. I would always forget the little bag with the EpiPen in it and all that. Mm -hmm. And one day my wife said, hey, if unsuspectingly the wrong thing ends up in a cookie and you forget and hand it to her, she will die. You cannot forget this bag. And I'll tell you, I don't forget that bag. There were some things when it came to how laundry gets done that my wife's like, hey, this is how I like it done. And I would say after being on the road and working, you know, 100 hours a week at the university, this is how I can get it done. And my wife said, okay, that's cool. And so it became... I don't want to be in control. I just want clean clothes. I'm going to let these things get done in this way. And then there's a couple of clothes like, hey, please don't throw my nice whatever into the underwear and put it on hot like because it, it doesn't work. That You know what I mean? So there's some basic things like that. So I want you to be very clear about the few things you can't live with um, without. And then here's number two. You have to practice letting the rest go. And here's how you do that. I want you to ask yourself when you start to feel yourself snapping, Ask yourself, what's the worst that can happen here? 
And if the worst that can happen is not death or somebody getting hurt, you've got to practice letting it go. Because you got a husband that's shown up that loves you guys and is trying his best. Is that fair? Yeah, that's going to be the hard part, though. It I is. I have such a hard time with that. It is. But I mean, just think about this. Think about every time when you were a little girl with the front door open, someone just hit you in the face with a cream pie. Just splat, right? As an adult, yeah. you would make sure you would deadbolt that front door because it's your house now. And anytime somebody started opening it, you would just duck it because you'd been hit in the face with a pie a thousand times, 10,000 times. This is the same exact thing. You have to remember what didn't, what, what, what kept me alive then is, is going to destroy my marriage now. It's not worth it. And it's not real either, by the way. And you know that. Yeah. Is that, is that fair? So like go to the other side of this, do this thought experiment with me. Just imagine how cool it would feel to not be angry with your husband. A lot less stressful. Okay. So can I say something crazy? For some reason, you're choosing stress. If you think uh, about... why? Why would I do that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm asking you. <laughs> uh, because that's what, you, that's what your body knows. Your body knows when there's a bunch of kids, we're supposed to feel this way. And what you have to teach your body is, no, 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 no. That's how it was one time. It's not going to be that way in my house because I get to decide what my house is going to feel like. And I'm going for warmth and I'm going to go for joy. I'm going to go for more laughter than chaos. There's always going to be chaos, especially with the way you guys did it, which is like, hey, let's just throw all the ingredients in the blender at the same time. That's going to be fine, but the blender is going to get really messy. That's cool, but you get to decide. And so that means... That when your husband's taking the laundry down and you see him put the t-shirts in with the, with the underwear, you ask yourself real quick, what's the worst that can happen? Nothing. There is no worst here. The clothes are going to get clean. Okay, cool. Yeah. Can I ask a, a question you that kind of goes along with that? Ask anything, yeah. So, because I, I think I, I'm, I've been kind of trying to do something like that where... I tell him more specifically, but I guess if I ask him to do something specifically and then I still see later on that he's not doing it that specific way, do you think it would be better to still just practice that? Like, okay, he didn't listen this time, but nothing bad is going to happen or yes. yes. Okay. Um, still do that. But two things, one, you can't, if you've got a baby on in one arm and a baby on the other and one wrapped around your leg and he's holding the fourth and you're saying, you got to do it like this. And if you do, you got to make sure this and that he is in survival mode. He is not in learning and listening mode. Yeah. Okay. And you are not in teaching mode. You are in control mode. I am barking orders because this is what my body knows. Oh, I like that a lot. Teaching compared to control mode. Yes. I like that. So if you want to teach somebody, you get down, like when I want to teach my daughter something, I get down on eye level with her because I am humongous compared to her little body. And when I hover over and say, hey, her body instantly goes to fight or flight. There is no more learning happening there. She'll do what I say because I'm humongous. She will not learn why we're doing what we're doing. So I'll get down and I'll look her in the eye and say, hey, and I'll hold both of her hands if she'll do that. Sometimes she will, sometimes she won't. And I will say, listen, if you put this in that light socket, you will die. <laughs> Don't do that. And she'll get real wide-eyed and I'll say, I love you and my job is to keep you safe. Right? See, I'm teaching her in that moment. Okay? So teaching has to be done offline. It cannot be done with kids screaming and blah, blah, blah. That's why I love like a weekly check-in husbands and wives. And by the way, it's real, real important at your kid's age. My wife and I would, I would walk in the door and this sounds cruel and I'm going to get a bunch of mean emails. I don't care. I'd walk past my kids. I'd say, hi guys. Hi guys. And I'd go straight to mom and mom got my first hug. Mom got my first attention. And then we would always say, I would say hi to the kids. And then I would say, we have to have, uh, we're having adult time. Y'all got to go. And they had to leave the room. And they have learned that even when we say we're having adult talk, they walk, they'll, they'll just get up and leave because it's just so wired into them that they just know that's a part of our home that they come second to my marriage. 
the kids have to come second to your marriage. And in a strange way, they, they will go in the rooms and they'll play and they'll do silly things. And yes, they'll whine and complain. He hit me, blah, blah. Cool. As soon as we're done with, 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 uh, mom and with adult time, then we'll, we'll come back. But that's the only way you can hang in there in, in the chaos you guys have. Okay. Tell me what you don't like about that. Um, I mean, just the days are hard, obviously, sometimes, but, um, no, I, I think I like it overall. I think as you're saying it, I recognize that we don't really spend a lot of time just talking one-on-one and um, we have twins that are eight months old. Oh, so <laughs> those, those are the ones that really take up the most time. Right. Um, but I'm, I'm thinking like even our quality time that we spend together is at the end of the day, we both feed a baby together. And then once the babies get in bed, he's got to go to bed because he wakes up early in the mornings to get ready. And he, he's such a nice guy. He lets me sleep in a little bit in the mornings too. So he wakes up early with the babies. Um, but I mean, that's our quality time and it's not even truly alone. We're, we're feeding babies together. And But also, can I say yeah. this? Mm-hmm. You've been pregnant for six years. <laughs> and a baby, an eight month old baby is, I, I love this. It doesn't make mathematical sense, but it's the fourth trimester, right? If you look at evolutionary psychology, we traded humongous brains for nine to 12 more months of gestation, like of, of a baby having to be attached to his mom. So I wanted to hear, I want you to hear me say this, this does get better. There is a season and you're in it where y'all ride this one out. Okay. Mm-hmm. But when you're feeding a baby, sometimes just watching a show, my wife and I watched bones with that show with, uh, I forget. I don't oh, remember. Yeah, I, I don't remember all the actors. We watched that. Though, boat. Yeah. I, I, we still laugh about it. Like, man, what my poor son, what he just, in, what he learned by osmosis. Cause we watched that show, but <laughs> there was some of that was important, but then there was also seasons when my wife was feeding my son and the TV was just off and we just talked to each other. That was, and that was all we could do. That was it. It's all we could have in that season. Um, otherwise it was going to get chaotic. And so eight months will in a snap of your fingers turn into 12 months. And then when you're 12 months, you're going to have a five-year-old and a five-year-old can be in the shower by themselves. A four-year-old can too, or in the bathtub. And a five-year-old, they're not going to wipe properly, but they can go to the bathroom on their own. And it's going to slowly be a tiny little pinhole light at the end of this tunnel. Um, And the one-year-olds will turn into 18 months old. And then you'll get a little bit of a gap. And the gap will get a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. So right now, I don't want you to do anything drastic. I want you all to hold on. And I want you all to come up with, all right, what do we need to hold on in this season? What do we need to hold on right now? We got twins that are eight months old and we have a three-year-old and a four-year-old, God help you all. That's a lot of humans, a little dependent humans. It may be we need to get some help. And I know he's a teacher and y'all got a family of six. And so um, there's not a lot of extra income. Maybe a friend comes over in the afternoon. Um, my, my son did some things when he was younger, when he was about 12 or 11, he would go over and play with little kids while mom, like a neighbor's mom did some stuff. And it was kind of like a stay-at-home babysitter-ish kind of thing. My son loved it. The kids loved it. And the mom loved, loved it. And because he was young, she got to pay him a lot less, just a couple of bucks. But figure out ways. What do we need here? What do we need? What do we need? And it's really hard to do that when you have babies all attached to you. So I would recommend you guys get away for a half day if possible. That may sound insane and have somebody come over or two people come over, but y'all plan. Okay. Everything in our life is different. We have to prioritize us first and we have to get these babies fed. What's that look like for us? What's that look like? And you, my friend, have to understand there's a light at the end of this tunnel. And how are we going to continue to prioritize or prioritize? What are the three or four things? i got to be clear on, I'm going to die on this hill. And then, yes, if you say, I need the laundry done, the bed made like this, and your husband does it 85% right, let it ride. Let it ride. Ask yourself, what's the worst that could happen here? You guys have got this. Hang on the line. I'm going to send you a copy of Building a Non-Anxious Life, my new book. I want you guys to use this as a roadmap for your family. And y'all can create a world inside of this chaotic (laughs) ecosystem y'all have. How do we create a non-anxious world? How do we create this? We'll be right back. Good folks. 
Slowing down is a critical aspect of mental health. Calming music, prayers, meditation, they're all great ways to find peace. And Hallow makes it easy to start a daily practice of meditation. Hallow is the number one prayer app in the world, and you can tailor content towards your faith tradition. From scripture readings and prayers to journaling, Hallow makes it easy to practice prayer, meditate, and build a deeper, more meaningful spiritual life and rediscover true peace. Go to hallow.com slash Deloney today to get three months of Hallow for free. Hallow.com slash Deloney. All right, we're back. Hey, man, I didn't even notice that last call. We got a whole bunch of more new, new people out here. Look at this. Another one. We got, we got people everywhere. It's good to see you, beautiful. <laughs> Another one. Fantastic. Are those twins? <sighs> wow. All right, let's go out to Kaylin in Columbus, Ohio. What's up, Kaylin? Hi. How we doing? I'm all right. How are you? Good, 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 good. Okay, so um, to give some context here, you called in on another show I was um, on, on the Ramsey show. You called in and you were talking about boundaries mm-hmm. with your mom. Is that right? Yep. <laughs> okay, walk me through the original call here. Okay. And then so, and, and what I, what the advice I gave, because it may have been terrible advice. No, it was good. It was good. Um, so I called, um, essentially since I graduated high school, my mom has been asking me for money. Um, and I'm just feeling kind of over it. And, um, so, but my mom doesn't have a very good income. She has a very low income, so I can't just not give her anything. So your advice was to, um, pay a bill directly to the company and tell her like, I'm taking this over, but I'm not giving you any more money. I'm not giving any money directly to her. Okay. And and I don't know if we talked about this, but why does she choose to make an income that she can't live on? So she, yeah, I forgot to recap that part. Um, she's on disability. So she, yeah, she has a seizure disorder and her knees are horrible because my brother beat her. That's right. That's right. That's right. So there's some family violence yeah. in there. And then, um, so she's on a fixed income, but if I remember correctly, does she spend a lot? She just, she doesn't even have that much money, but she spends all of the money she doesn't have. Like, I'll give you an example here in a minute when I tell you my new problem. Okay. But. Okay. <laughs> so basically I, I told you, Hey, if it was my mom, I'd continue to help her out, but clearly just handing her cash is not helping the problem. So instead yeah. of handing somebody the cash, I will take care of one bill or two bills or whatever, but I'm going to, I'm going to pay directly to the company. I'm going to take this burden off of you. Yeah. Okay. And so bring me that now we're up to speed. So what's happened since then? Okay, so a few days after that, I I don't live in the same city as my mom. So I drove down and like sat her down and we went through her expenses. We went through her income. We I downloaded every dollar. We talked about like, mom, you have to budget. Like, look, you just don't have enough money right now because you're spending here and here and here. And um, I told her I would take over some of the bills. And I think the phrase that I used was, I'm paying this. But that is it. I cannot be your emergency fund anymore. Um, Can I just stop real quick? Good for like, good for you. That's that was a hard conversation, wasn't it? Yeah, I was so stressed about it. I think I listened to our call on the Ramsey show like five times right before to like get all pumped up. Reassure myself. (laughs) Yeah, you were like Dwight in the Camaro listening to Motley Crue, just like getting ready. Good job. Yes. All right. Good job. (laughs) Okay, so you had this call conversation. How did it? How did she take it in person initially? She, it seemed to go well. I mean, she was upset and embarrassed, mm-hmm. um, but she seemed receptive. Um, and my sister was there too. My sister lived with her and also just gives her money all the time. And so I talked to my sister too about like, 
I know you live together and you don't pay rent, but you need to come up with like a set number that you're paying her every month, not just like swipe my card when you run out. Just not be an ATM machine. Good for you. Gosh, good for you. Okay. So I'm assuming that sounded good in philosophy and in theory, but then in reality has been different. Yeah. So we had that conversation. Seemed to be good. I set up to pay a couple of her bills. Um, and then literally the next week, she is calling me, Hey, do you want to go to a concert together? I just bought tickets. Oh, so that was very frustrating. Yes. Um, so frustrating. <laughs> so now she's got, she's got a little bit of room to breathe and she chose to buy concert tickets, right? Yeah. And I don't think they were insanely expensive, but like, I know they were more than that the amount that we budgeted for stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, And then last week, so before I emailed you guys, um, she called me crying on Thursday um, and said, like, I'm so sorry to ask you this. I know you said you can't give me any more money, but um, the property taxes are due and I am a failure and I didn't budget for them. I I need a thousand dollars. Oh, and I like kind of sat in silence for a little bit and she said, or, I mean, if you could at least do 500, that would help. Wow. Yeah. So are you asking and, me what you should do now? Well, I told her no. Okay. <laughs> um, so, but, okay. So there's another layer to this that we didn't get into on the, um, Ramsey on the other show. show. Okay. Yeah. Um, so part of the reason that, I'm like kind of done with giving her all of this money is because my spouse and I are like aggressively saving to cash flow fertility stuff. Okay. Um, Cause we want to be parents. And my mom knows that we've had this conversation that we're trying to save up this money so that we can have a baby um, because it like won't work for us naturally. And it feels like when she asked me, Oh gosh, I'm going to cry. It feels like, um, when she asked, keeps asking me for money, knowing what we're trying to do with our money, it feels like she's saying my desire to not budget is more important than you guys being parents. Yeah. And that's making me feel really resentful. Yeah. And like, I know you always say she's guilt over resentment, <laughs> but I'm feeling both. Yeah. Well, and let me, let me reframe that a little bit. Okay. Um, do you, yeah. do you have kids yet? No. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's what y'all working on. Okay. So I've got two little ones. I've got a 13 year old and a seven year old. Okay. I'm trying mm-hmm. to imagine what would happen if on the way home today, I got in a car wreck and I hit my head just enough that I couldn't, I couldn't talk as quickly as I can on this show. And ultimately me and my boss, me and Dave had to sit down and say, Hey, um, uh, we can't, I mean, we can't have you on the radio show anymore. And I had to go on disability. And then when I was on disability, my 13 year old, which is just, this is funny because he's the kindest guy in the world, but he got mad at me (laughs) with a baseball bat and broke both of my knees. And I went through rehab again and had to get on government assistance and I was on disability and I'm never going to be what I was. And I'm, I'm pretty active. I'm out all the time. Mm-hmm. And so I want to, I do get the feelings that you have. Your feelings are very, very real. But just for context, I'm going to imagine your mom as somebody who's gone through severe trauma. And her life yeah. as she had mapped it out is nowhere close to what she thought it was going to look like. And her body has over time focused everything on her own belly button. Right. And so I don't think she, and this, this may even hurt worse. I don't think she even thinks of you guys. I don't think it even enters her mind because everything is about the next second in her life. And because she has, um, lost the inability over time to look up and see out ahead of her and see other people and experience other people's lives. She's just staring at her belly button, belly button, belly button. It's all about right now. I want to buy these tickets right now. I need a thousand dollars right now. 
And I just expect the world to give it to me. Because, and in many ways, she's given up on herself. And I'm going to even say, for some of that, fair enough. But eventually, people who give up on themselves do one of two things. Either they run out of options and they decide today's the day, like sick and tired of being sick and tired, right? You've heard that? Um, Yeah. I'm going to figure this out. Or they spiral out. And so my guess is for the first time, you're putting up some pretty significant boundaries and you're choosing your, your family, your husband mm-hmm. and, your, and the family that will be to come over just being an endless ATM machine. And the way you've done it, which is not just cutting her off and not just saying, forget you. You're, no, we're still going to honor you. You're, I'm still going to honor my mom, mother and father. Honoring doesn't mean I have to do whatever you say whenever you ask. That means I'm going to love you the best we can right now. And so I'm going to pick up one or two bills I think that's pretty noble, but I would get, um, I would tell you, I would get out of her head as to why she's calling, um, what she's not thinking about, what she's trying to do to you and your husband. I would get out of her head because all that does is weigh you down. Yeah. It's an exhausting thing to try to figure out what your mom is thinking, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so I would just quit trying to figure that out and I would stick by our boundaries. And if you and your husband want to say, okay, you send us your bill. And I'll tell you this, um, when people start budgeting, it usually takes about 90 days, about three budget cycles to get it all ironed out because crap like this happens. Like, oh, I forgot about life insurance. That bill just showed up. Or I forget that, Mm -hmm. you know, we oil changes. I forgot that. Um, And so these things just pop up. And so it usually takes about 90 days, three months to get, to get to a solid budget. And so it may be that you you sit down with your husband and say, "Hey, we're on a we were we cut off, we cut mom off, but there's going to be a, an exit ramp here. It's going to be a little bit longer than we hoped. So, mom, you send me your tax bill, and me and my husband will decide because that tax bill may not even be real, right? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. So you send me the bill, I'll consider it, or you say, "Mom, we're just not going to do any more money right now." And um, I'll tell you this. Here's probably what's going to happen. The t- there's going to be tears. And she, it sounds like she's already tried that. Calling you. I'm such a loser. Yeah. I'm the worst. Will you help your poor mom? Mm-hmm. You said no. Good for you for holding boundaries. And then it's going to turn to anger. How dare you? Who do you think yeah, you are? Who do you I think just, you are? Right? Yeah. I just don't know, like... Like I saw her yesterday Mm -hmm. um, and like, I was just like, my whole body was just like tense the whole time. And I don't know if that's because you always say to like lead with this, my ACEs score is like a nine. So I don't know (laughs) um, if that's why or like, but like, I feel like I get worked up easily, but. Hold on. Your body's been trying to protect you for so long, Kaylin. I know. And your mom has never been a place that's safe. And I want to tell you this, she should have been. I'm not blaming her because it sounds like the whole world caved in on her too. Yeah. But your mom's not safe. And so constantly putting your finger back in the light socket and getting frustrated, you keep getting electrocuted. At some point, that's on you. And that means you have to deal with, you have to grieve the picture that I'm going to have this new husband who's amazing. We're going to have a couple of kids. It's going to be amazing. And we're going to have grandma time. You may not have grandma time. Or it may be very limited and very different than how you had hoped it would be. And you have to also grieve the fact that we were just going to start having babies. And that's been a challenge, right? Yeah. And the one person you should be able to call is your mom. And you can't call mom. And so that means not that you do without calling people, but now your new mission is to find a woman who's got some experience down the road from you that you can trust that you could reach out to. Do you have that? Um, maybe. Everything in your body will say, don't take a risk with a maternal figure. And I'm going to tell you, you got to, you need that. You're worth that. You see how much, how much bigger this picture gets for you? Yeah. Have you been to counseling yet? Yeah. Um, 
I've been in and out of counseling for a long time, but I started going again a couple months ago. How's that working? Um, it's good. Um, I just, I haven't been able to see my person for a couple weeks because she's been on vacation. Okay. I want you to get back in as soon as possible. And here's what I want you to, to ask in a direct way. I need to work on A, boundaries with mom. And B, I need to work on some skills that when I'm with mom, I stop outsourcing the way my body feels to her energy. That's what healing actually is. Is when you can be around somebody who's not okay and you remain okay. You can remember those things that happened to you. An ACEs score of nine means you grew up in hell, right? Yeah. Yeah. That you can think back to some of those things and your body doesn't take off on you. I'm going to tell you, being uh, on the other side of it, it's amazing. Do you trust me that that healing is real? Yeah. I promise. I promise. What you've done with the skill set you've got is nothing short of staggering. It's amazing. And you don't see it because you're in the middle of it and you just feel Ugh, every time mom calls or every time she's around, your heart yeah. starts beating really fast. Remember this line. She does not get a vote. Do you have any close, close friends besides your husband? Um, I have a couple. Okay. I want you to call them and I want you to, um, if you can invite them out for coffee, great. If not, cool. Talk to him on the phone and just say, I'm going through a new season of healing, especially as I enter into IVF and all that stuff, which is just an up and down roller coaster. It's brutal. Um, and I'm going to need somebody to reach out to just to say I'm not okay today. And I'm choosing you. And I'll hope that you'll accept that role. Like, like 007. This, I hope you'll accept the mission. And I might text you at midnight. I might text you at 10 a.m. And here's our secret code if I need you to call me right away. But can I count on you in that way? And they, they may say no. They may say no. But I bet they won't. I bet they'll say absolutely. Because you're doing the right things. The hard right things. I'm proud of you. But now we're going to move into step two, which is, okay, we're putting up boundaries, which are great. Now that we got these boundaries up, we got to get take care of the heartbeat inside the, these walls, inside these boundaries. And that's you. It's going to be some intentional connection with husband. It's going to be some intentional connection with some friends. It's going to be some intentional disconnection from mom. And by the way, the, when the money gets cut off, she'll probably pull away and you're going to feel a tension that you got to go find her. You don't, not in this season, not while you're getting well because mom's still not safe. And she's going to get mad. She's going to get angry, all that. Mom's not safe. So I'm going to hold my ground. I'm going to hold my boundary. I'm going to rely on my people who I love. I'm proud of you. Hang on the line. I'm going to send you building a non-anxious life too. Um, as something you and your husband can use as a roadmap inside your home because you're going to have to build something you've never seen, which is a home full of laughter and warmth and joy, not a home full of chaos, 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 and abuse. You call anytime. We, we'll, we'll, I'll have you on the show once a week. Just have you call in and check in and see what the, the latest thing I can help you with. But I promise you there's healing on the back end of this. Last thing, as I said earlier, be very direct with your counselor about what you want to work on. We're not just going to go and talk anymore. We're going to get very specific because I need to learn how to live in my own skin. And unfortunately, I got to learn to live in my own skin separate from mom. I promise you can do it. I promise. We'll be right back. Hey, what's up? Dr. John Deloney here. Check it out. My new book, Building a Non-Anxious Life, is now available for pre-order. Here's the great news. Anxiety is not the enemy we've been led to believe. I know this because I've walked alongside countless folks over the last two decades, and I've struggled with this too. If you create a life of intentionally living out the six daily choices I've outlined in this book, you're going to be able to better respond to whatever life throws at you. You're going to learn the choices you can make day by day to create a more peaceful, joyful, 
less chronically stressed, non-anxious life. Plus, when you pre-order my book, I want to give you something to help you today. That's why you'll instantly get my newest talk, Smoke, Fire, and Freedom, that I gave to several thousand folks a few months ago, where I break down the misunderstandings and myths we believe about anxiety, how to reclaim your freedom, and how to build a non-anxious life. So pre-order Building a Non-Anxious Life today for just 20 bucks at johndeloney.com. All right, we're back as we wrap up today's show. Um, this is Kelly's latest tattoo. I didn't strike her as an emo gal, but I did catch her the other day with her fingernails were all painted black, and she had like the swoop hair cr- cut. And I walked by, and she was like, it's time to go right now. And then she was writing poetry about her dad. It was the whole thing. But um, she got this one tattooed on the back of her neck right above her uh, her barcode symbol, and it just says My Chemical Romance real small, which is kind of cool. The song's called I Don't Love You. And it goes like this. Well, when you go, don't ever think I'll make you try to stay. And maybe when you get back, I'll be off to find another way. And after all this time that you still owe, you're still a good for nothing. I don't know. So take your gloves and get out. Take your gloves and get out. I've never heard that. I've heard take your jacket, take your coat, but take your gloves and get out. Better get out while you can. When you go and would you ever turn to say, I don't love you like I did yesterday. Whew, dark poetry. My Chemical Romance, Kelly's fave. I love you guys. Bye.